one of my favorite parts of this little YouTube channel is the interaction I get to have with you guys. And a few weeks ago, we tried something new on the old Retro Bassin show. Pretty often, either through Instagram, Messenger, or Facebook, Bass and Bud send me photos of old school lures that they need help identifying. Want to try something new? I put a number of those photos in one episode. We played a little Stump Retro. Well, no surprise, after that episode aired, I got dozens more. So stick around because, boy, we have some unidentified old school gold to look at today. Retro bassin, kicking some ass in, wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Bass boat making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Welcome back to Retro Bassin. Hope everybody is having a great time out there in Retro Bassin land. We have been on a tear fishing in and outside the state of Texas, and I have a boatload of footage to go through to get some fresh episodes up for you guys. Well, meanwhile, we are back in the Retro Bassin studio, and we are going to rely on some Bassin Bud photo submissions and play a little stump retro. By the way, if this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like to fish it old school, talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from fishing days gone past, well, stick around, consider subscribing, and be sure to hit that bell icon. Otherwise, you won't know we post a new video like this one. All right, well, let's get right into the viewer submissions. And the first one comes to us from somebody that I actually follow on Instagram, the Ozarks Fisherman. If you don't follow him, he's definitely a page worthy of following and does a lot of fishing at old school. Well, Ozarks was in an antique tackle shop and he snapped a photo of some what looked like old school storm wiggle warts. They've got a pretty good price on them and he was curious if these would be a good buy or not. So I told Ozarks that the key to figuring out whether a uh, wiggle wart is old school, i.e. pre rapala or one of the newer models, is to look at the bill. If it says wiggle wart underneath, it is a pre rapala wiggle wart, and if it says storm, it is one of the newer models. Well, there is a lot of debate whether those pre rapala wiggle warts truly deserve the premium that they demand online and at different sales, but just in case you're curious, here is an OG wiggle wart. And you can tell it's an OG wiggle wart because it says wiggle wart on the bottom. And I've shown this in episodes before, but I always get a kick out of it. If you look at the bill of that crankbait, holy smokes, that thing is jacked up. And the theory goes that jacked up lip, which is the result of some outdated molds, causes this bait to hunt like no other. So Ozarks checked it out. Those were actually some pre rapala wiggle warts, and I think he picked those up. And if he did, that was a great buy. Next on the list is a submission from Jimmy, who sent me a photo of some antiques he found in his grandfather's tackle box. First is a quill float, which I just love. I didn't even know they made that, which is pretty cool. And he also sent a photo of a lure on top. Now, to me, that looks like an LNS mirror lure, which was first designed by Harold Lemaster in 1937. Now, of interest to me is Harold Lemaster moved to Florida in 1951, where he discovered that he could put a mirrored insert into his lure, and thus was born the mirror lure. Here is a old school mirror lure, which is probably pretty similar to the one that Jimmy sent. This is new in the box. And this is model 00M18. This is a mirror lure style that they don't make anymore, and I wish they did. It is a really nice little crankbait. Check that thing out. It's got a pretty cool metal lip on it. And of course, it's got that mirror lure sparkle. Well, Jimmy, I definitely understand if you would not want to throw that piece of old school cold 
but it would be a great fish catcher. If you want, you could definitely pick up some of these online for a pretty reasonable price. The next photo submission comes to us from Chris, who sent a couple of unidentified plugs. Well, this one is going to drive me nuts because I just saw a full collection of these baits at last year's NFL CC National Show, and I don't recall the name of them. I did reach out to Adi's Tackle Box, which is sort of my go-to for very esoteric lures, and he responded, these look like a pair of pencil plugs. He doesn't know the manufacturer, but I think a number of different manufacturers made these. To me, those baits almost look like an elongated bass arena, so maybe it's a plug that you could either cast or troll. Either way, a great find, Chris, and thank you for sharing. The next couple baits come to us from Dominic, who sent two photos of two pretty unique baits. One I immediately identified, and one I was a little bit sketchy on. The first one is a man's ghost, and after Dominic sent that photo, I actually scooted on over to the man's website where I was super excited to see some ghosts for sale. I put in an order, and before it arrived, the order got canceled. So I guess the man's ghost is officially discontinued. That's a little bit of a bummer. The other lure is a pretty neat one. It is a topwater bait in a nice old school frog pattern. I initially thought this was some sort of Dalton special, but again, I asked D Stackabox and he seems to think that it is a Shakespeare special. It is a style of top bar that you don't see too, too often. Sort of a propeller bait on the back with a planing front. A neat one that I've never thrown, and if I could ever get my hands on one, I definitely would. So thank you, Dominic, for the submissions on those two collectibles. Bass and Bud Cole sent us a number of pretty cool photographs of some lures from his tackle box, so I put four of my favorites in a little collage. In the upper left-hand corner, that to me looks like a Crankbait Corporation fingerling. That was a pretty cool bait in the 1990s made out of some sort of foam. Those baits came out in that style and also my favorite, which was the Bullcat series. These had a ultra-realistic body shape, almost reminiscent of a live target today, and they were made from a foam material. So they definitely ran a little bit different. They were silent for the most part, but some great looking patterns, and that is definitely a cool one to have in your collection. Just beside that, I see a bait that had me a, a little bit stumped. That bait that Cole sent reminded me of some that I do have, which is this. This is a Zebco Doll Ditch Digger. It is a nice metal lip crankbait, and whew, that thing totally would be a walleye killer. It's a great looking bait with some super, super stout hooks and a really nice fish profile. Check that out. Well, the photo Cole sent looks like the shallow version of it, which I totally would throw if I could get my hands on one. Now on the lower left, that looks like some sort of mirror lure knockoff. And it's got a very unique side on it with some mirrored panes. While I don't know for sure, this has all the hallmarks of a Boone Lure, which being a Florida company, not a surprise that they've got a LNS version of their bait. Boone had a number of baits from diving plugs to topwater poppers, and a lot of them had that same strip of mirroring on it. So to me, that looks just like a Boone bait. Well, I saved the hardest for last. This is one that not only had me stumped, but also had Dee's tackle box stumped. This is a really unique plug, almost looks like some sort of miniature version of an offshore trolling plug. Dee's guess and also mine is that this is some Tom Man creation. To me, this does not look like a man's creation as much as a Tom Man bait in that Fish World Pogo Shad era. Either way, I would love to see that bait that had me stumped in the water. <laughs> and you never know what you're going to find on Instagram Messenger. Another guy who I follow a pretty good bit, uh, Jackson Harris, sent me this photo, apparently from his local grocery store, where he found a very nice retro snack. <laughs> uh, Jackson, it's funny enough, but I actually did pick up a bag of these, uh, because, you know, to me, anytime I go in a store and I see something retro, I've got to buy it. And those taco-flavored Doritos did not disappoint. 
If you would like to send a submission and have it featured on a Stump Retro segment of the Retro Bassin Show, go ahead and hit me up on Instagram Messenger or Facebook, even though, to be honest, I don't check Facebook nearly as much. If you guys are looking for more old school content, click right here. Until next time, I'll see you right back here, same time, same place. Until then, keep the carpet side up, and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass.